Hello, how's it going, everybody? My name is Drew, and I'm over here at our Arcturus Cinema headquarters. And with me today is Neil Shapiro of Zen Digital Analytics. Introduce yourself real quick for us, Neil. I'm Neil Shapiro. I am going on three years living in Vegas. Uh, brought Zen Digital Analytics with me to Vegas uh, because <laughs> it's totally remote. And uh, it, it's been one heck of a journey. Appreciate you coming on the show. It's good to have you. And uh, before we get too, too deep into it, I wanted to ask you, so how how's your day been going? You know, it, it's kind of been a, a decompression day from a week of just kind of un, unexpected things coming into my purview and um, doing a implementation launch for a client and in simple terms, nothing ever goes according to plan. Um, what should have probably taken two hours took six hours. Um, in between that, I was supposed to meet, meet up with somebody in downtown Summerlin at four o'clock. And I sent him a text and he's like, uh, I said, Paul, um, if you hear from me at 3.30, I'm on my way. If not, I can't make it. And ironically, I had another event in downtown Summerlin at six o'clock and he sent oh, me a message. He's like, don't sweat it. He goes, I am totally jammed up. Why don't we reschedule? So we're, we're going to go out to lunch on Tuesday and talk. But, uh, nice. and, and just to share with everybody as as they say, you know, Drew and everything we do, the world's really round. Uh, a week ago, I was contacted by a former colleague of mine. Uh, we spoke on Wednesday, she has started a new role and she has basically said, I need your help. And uh, there's a really excellent consulting engagement that's gonna start optimally soon, sooner than later. So it was really great to catch up with her, but it also shows that you just don't know where people are gonna, you know, all of a sudden out of the blue and I'm sitting there and I got the message and I'm laughing. I'm like, oh, wow. My friend uh, always says, you know, it's uh, ongoing. <laughs> yes. And it, and it definitely is. So that's, that's, good. that's good to hear that that worked out and you're able to reschedule that. Before I ask you a little bit about how you got started, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you give uh, the audience kind of a taste or kind of a, I don't want to say elevator pitch, but just like a brief kind of what you do at Zen Digital Analytics. Okay. So it's really, really interesting as the last few years have unfolded for me and being out and networking and talking to businesses and interacting with them. What, what I do up front is real simple is I'm the guy that comes in and crunches the data for any website that has Google Analytics for now implemented on it. But what it comes down to is this, and I, I almost call it the million dollar question. Now, are you measuring your results? Are you learning from those results? If not, as I say, your website is truthfully a glorified business card and you're not, it's like, hey, I got a website, go there, send me a message. That's great, but do you know where your clients are coming from? Do you know where your leads are coming from? I'll use what you do as an example. Are you measuring video play? Because you can create a great video and if, and if a user really in using a benchmark of 95%, if they're not getting to 95%, Something isn't right or your call to action isn't where it should to be. So I, I do a lot of measuring. I handle a lot of the, not to go deep, uh, technical side of the business. I do a lot of what's known as data visualization for clients just because as Google has disrupted the space, it's a lot easier to use their visualization solution versus using the user interface, which can be very painful. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. It's not always the most uh, user friendly, as they say. Uh, <laughs> that's what I've heard. But yeah, no, that is very, very important. And to kind of add on to what you're saying real quick. Um, that's why I stress to all my clients, you know, with the well, after I deliver the video assets mm -hmm. to them, I am always like, hey, yeah, you know, make sure to do these things to track, uh, you know, the retention rate, uh, you know, yeah. and then and then how many people like compared to before the video versus after you add it to the website, how many new visitors they're getting. A lot of people just think, 
I'll just put it on a, a new video on my website or I'll change my homepage and they don't really think to track it. And it's just kind of, it's like really important to figure it out. Cause if you can figure out, like you're saying where the cus- uh, customers or potential customers, I should say, are coming from, then you can tweak some things and really maximize and optimize the website. Well, I'll, I'll throw this out there to the audience too, is, you know, you make it like, Somebody invests in, in your services and you've created a, a phenomenal video and I've seen your work. Um, okay, so it's it's on the website now. So you need to measure how many, like if there's a baseline, like your average, let's say it's a lead a day. All right. We had we had the, the video produced by Drew, whatever it is. Now I'm averaging two to three more leads a day. When did it pay for it? When did it, when did that investment pay for itself? And I, I keep stressing that to people and I, I get kind of a blank stare and I'm like, you know, either it's going to give you a return or <laughs> I use the term, you set money, you set your own money on fire. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and again, it's always about learning too. That, that, that's the one thing I can't stress to people is if you're not measuring, you're not learning. And you're yeah, not, yeah. and if you're not learning, you're not growing either. You basically say, "Here, come to my website. Come to my website." <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's very, very important. And uh, so, how did you get started in the with your company? You know, what got got you into the analytics space for? for, for the the uh, story silent. is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> twenty years ago, literally by accident, as I say, I landed in the travel industry. This is before we had iPhones. This is really pre-mobile. And within three weeks, they wanted an analyst, just basically a data cruncher, spreadsheet creator. Um, the digital side of the business was literally dropped into my cubicle. And that's where the journey started. L- literally. Um, at that time, when I was at that company, I was, let's say, the company of 350. Um, I was it. I, I was the guy learning as I go. But the last few years, um, Simple terms, I help manage uh, the most profitable business unit in the company. And 13 years ago, <laughs> it's funny when you, you know, with somebody, the timeline start to gel again, um, there was a restructuring and I was let go and really started me down a journey of, wasn't easy. Because um, I tell people this is when you're chasing the job, sometimes it's going to seem farther and farther away. And there were a lot of starts and stops. And at one point I said, you have to be a practitioner of your craft. Like you drew producing videos, even when you started out, you know, the first one wasn't perfect. And, you know, you perfect, you perfect. And I said, okay, I'm sitting here interviewing for jobs. I was a first mover on Fiverr.com to do website analysis. I ranked number one for a few years, but I really wasn't making money. Hmm. So I want to say three or four years in the, down that journey, I did go back to corporate and media. Um, it felt great at first. It was a, a lot of money, but in the end of it, I, I, again, out of my control, I was replaced with a lower cost consultant and started down that path again. And a lot of, you know, I call them the close calls. Again, I was chasing the job, as they say. Mm-hmm. And and the well, timeline is, you know, I, I took a consulting role a little out of what I normally do um, for a medical company, right? Six months before the pandemic. Oh, wow. um, they let me go. They ended my contract early. It was an amicable. I actually spoke to the, the vice president of marketing about three or four months ago. Had a great conversation with him, and uh, it's funny. I had basically said at that point I was still freelancing and doing this consulting role, but then I um, I had interviewed for a role out here, and right as the pandemic hit, and I got off that call, and I, was, I just didn't have that warm and fuzzy feeling internally. Like uh, I say this to your audience. Everything's about preparation. I was prepared for this interview, and this vice president said, well, I'm still looking at your resume, and the next step would be, and then the pandemic hit. A couple days later, somebody really close to me said, what do you really want to do? 
uh, and with no hesitation, I said, I am all in on me. And that's where I just went full bore. I mean, the pandemic did bring great clients, uh, a lot of great experiences. And, you know, the, the move to Nevada w- was interesting because I was ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. And then I got to move, guys. I <laughs> told my clients, look, I'm available, but I'm packing my life up at the same time. So I'm like, can we hold back on some of these projects? And they st- stood behind me 110%. And they said, you know, get settled. Once you're ready, let us know. And um, basically turned all the switches on again. And it- it's an interesting journey because things will be really good and real busy for a long time. And then things like I had clients who amicably did not re- – last year did not renew engagements. I – Last year, I had my biggest, best year, but my biggest client, um, I wish I could openly announce, say who it was, but it was another large media company, uh, did a lot of migration with them, and uh, wonderful experience. You know, again, you, you got to learn how to balance the business out, and it's just the way things kind of unfolded is finished up with them. I had two clients drop. Uh, I had another client come in, uh, great experience. Um kind of a little different than what they do, uh, got them there. And then we hit the end of 2023 and I kind of got sick. <laughs> uh, I was under the weather for about six weeks and um, 2024 has had a lot of challenges. I, I will openly say I, I have spoken to a lot of companies. They're stretched financially. I'll use that term loosely, but mm-hmm. I, I say this is what it costs to measure. This is what, you know, in some cases you, you use empathetic listening to say, okay, sometimes they won't tell you everything up front and you got to kind of pull it out of them. And one of them, I said, okay, you tell me you're not doing well. You spent money on paid advertising. We need to look at your organic sales versus your paid sales. And his marketing guy is in the room. And I said, I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm here to tell you the truth because I said, the numbers are not going to lie. Did that go anywhere? No. You know, and and then I had another one who um, found me on LinkedIn, went to the website, booked a call. And like we were talking about making investments and she had lost her analytics person. Nothing had, as far as she could tell was exactly migrated over the way she felt it could have been done. And then she says to me, yeah, I I made an SEO investment. And I said to her, okay, so we need to align your analytics and we need to measure when you started the, you know, let's call it the SEO enhancement and see how many more leads it's generating. She's like, why? And I said, why why did you make, why did you bring somebody in for search engine optimization? I said, you have to answer that question. I said, because there's, there's a compound effect on your business. One is you should be ranking higher in Google. We should have the ability to see that. And secondly, like my, my prior example is if you were doing one lead a day and now you're doing two to three leads a day and we can contribute that to an organic lead, odds are your SEO investment paid for itself. Gave her, you know, I said, this is, this is what it costs. Yeah. So, silence, I, you know, and, and I have a policy, you know, and I leave it open ended. I said, you know, if you want to have a follow up call to discuss the proposal, if you have any other questions, I said, I am more than happy to, you know, talk to you about it. You know, I, I have your best interests. You know, I, I say to clients, this is a partnership because I say to them, if I if you're not leveling up, I am not doing my job. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. It's a, all about creating that win-win and like you said it's like well, when it comes to the analytics and and uh, especially kind of like w- with my business too in a sense you know I audit their market current marketing strategy and their goals and and I just will tell them how it is and like well you know like you know I don't just want to make a video for you we, we need to develop the why like you're saying like mm-hmm. why are you investing in SEO or why do you want to invest in a video? What do you, 
think it's going to do for, for your business and um, come from that place because that way it's a little bit more informed, you know? No, you, you're, you're totally spot on. And, and um, who was I talking to? Like I'll use video as an example, even when we're talking analytics and implementation uh, for the audience, YouTube and Google Analytics 4 speak well to each other. Vimeo and Google Analytics 4 don't exactly speak well to each other. And I, I tell people, you know, especially when I deal with a client who, who has videos in, like YouTube embedded into the site, you know, I, I say to them, we can very easily measure these videos to see how well they're performing. And I get, well, why do I want to do that, Neil? Well, you made the investment, you created the video. Is it, do, is it, is it, I mean, it should only help you tell the story. And a lot, a lot of times like, oh, okay, then let's do this. My next question I wanted to ask you is, um, so what would you say, um, so far has been kind of the biggest challenge when it comes to, uh, you, you know, like, uh, starting out with your own business, what do you say? I think the biggest challenge was understanding what my worth was, not being afraid to make an ask. And fortunately enough, this digital space, again, I use the term is very round and I've been fortunate enough over the last number of years reconnecting. I call, I call them industry, their friends, their industry peers, their colleagues and having that ability to say, Hey, what do you think? And having that support has been huge. Um, I've also been fortunate. I think the other challenge I have faced is there's a lot of competition in this space and there's probably a handful of us that truly care for the client success and I've come into situations where it's like, I've been left with a mess. Can you help me? Mm. And that to me crazy. But I, I think also the biggest challenges right now, as I built this out is the way the technology just keeps changing and adding and there's new solutions. And I try to keep things very smart and simple. It's just because that way being able to like some clients, I dealt with get the shiny new toy syndrome, as I call it. And I say to them, we, we need to crawl, you know, crawl before we can walk. And a lot of times they're like, why? I said, I I'll give you a very simple one that's come up. Um, everybody likes heat mapping. That seems to like, and um, it's about a year ago, uh, Microsoft created their own solution that it's totally free. It integrates with Google, the Google ecosystem, and it's got heat mapping. And I said to one client, well, if we, I, I tell you what, I said, let's implement clarity. I said, it's not going to hurt anything. I said, and then I put the onus on them. If you want to keep hot jar and it's cost, I said, I, I could be saving you a lot of money for something that technically you're just paying me to put it in there. That's going to do the same thing. But people get very fixated on shiny new toys or here, here's the biggest challenge, Drew, and this is interesting. It's looking underneath the hood and then resetting expectations. Mm. Like, why do I, you know, wh why am I not making money? Uh, I'll be honest, your call to action is horrible or your call to action is not on the right spot on the page because otherwise people would be clicking on, yeah, I, I, you know, filling out the form or say, you know, clicking a call. I, I, you know, I, the challenges vary, but for me, the challenge has also forced me to get out of my own comfort zone to learn and create, which is part of the measurement space is, is learning and, and almost creating at the same time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause you have to create as you go, as you learn these new things. Um, but yeah, that, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Cause, uh, you know, you have to have that, um, honesty with, with those clients and just, uh, try and recalibrate those expectations, uh, especially because like I had it recently where I built a, 
a landing page for a free report that I offer. And um, I'm in a mastermind group, a business mastermind group. And the guy who is, um, he, he's the guy in the group who is like really into, he makes some landing pages and, and websites. And he was like, your uh, call to action is in the wrong spot. You know, you're, you're, uh, you have too much verbiage up here. Like you need the, the actual button to be up here and, and you can put all the verbiage down at the bottom, but like, uh, you know, you need the form to go up. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but he, he was like blunt about it. He, he didn't hold back, which was nice. Cause I was like, oh, I, I didn't think of that, you know, like, so it's, um, yeah, it's like that kind of that, that, um, that, uh, tough love I feel like sometimes. And then same, uh, sometimes too, like I'll, I'll look at a, be auditing a, a potential client's like website and be like, Hey, you have a nice video. You know, it's good. They have a video. It's good. But I feel like we could make something together. That's even better. Um, and so not being afraid to, to kind of throw that out there, I think is important and always is kind of a challenge for sure. I think the biggest thing is you learn. I think early on, I took things personally and, and then you know, I, I, I kind of had to like unlearn the pattern of like, okay, you don't like what I said, fine, but that's my opinion. And I don't take it, I don't take it personally anymore. I, I just like, okay, you know, and not to sound cruel, I did have experience along this journey where I had to fire a client. It just got to a point of you're overstepping my own personal boundaries because he was on the East Coast and it just got to a point one day I was on a call and he's texting me, like screaming at me. And I, and I looked at my friend. And I said, I'm done. I'm done dealing with this guy. And I don't, and sent him a message. I said, Keith, I, I, I quit. Yeah. And then we had a follow-up conversation and uh, I, I was pretty, I'll admit I was animated a little bit. And I said, look, I said, you have to understand you're, you know, I have, I, you know, I have a life, all right, and you're sending me messages at six o'clock in the morning. My time, it's nine o'clock in New Jersey, and I'm I'm just not getting out of bed, you know, for for what it for whatever it is. It's it's got to wait, and I also, um, I don't like to work with people who start chasing after, you know, the brass ring, because they 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 tend to get very defensive. When you tell them the truth. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I, I had people criticize me. I'm like, you, you quit? I said, yeah. And they're like, well, and I said, I said, from a, a revenue standpoint and a business standpoint, within six weeks, I already made that, you know, that billable up plus, plus five. Let's, let's just call it plus five. And I, I, I just, I had peace of mind. You know, I think the, the best thing I can say to the audience is, if you don't feel good about it, don't force it anymore. It's not, it's not worth, you know, your own mental health and your physical health. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that was something I learned, um, um, I would say this past year in 2023, if he isn't feeling good and they're not, are not really willing to collaborate in a sense, um, then it's just best to, to, because there's so many clients out there who are willing to collaborate and are my whole thing is now like when I take on clients is like how does it feel like I, I pay attention to that more like how does it feel working with them is this a good work relationship work dynamic um how's the communication how's the you know them giving me feedback things like that you know? I had a verbal agreement I didn't have a contract I didn't have an like an NDA I wasn't going to sit there and badmouth the guy Cause I'm like, okay, you can go out and easily replace me. I, I just was like done with it. You know, exactly. it was, it was, and, and there was a comment he made to me and I said, and I said to him, look, I shouldn't be chasing your people down for answers. Like I've been. All right. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, and I said, I'll be honest with you. I said, look at your email threads. When you have told people you need to answer Neil's questions and they don't answer them. I said, what does that tell you? That's a good point. Sometimes you have to put it back at them. I'm like, you know, it was one of those. I'm like, look at the email threads. 
thought to shift gears a little bit, I wanted to ask you really quick. Um, you mentioned before there's some always some new trends and new things coming out. Uh, what are some of the biggest trends you see in your industry right now? Trends in the industry. That's a really good question. Um, I feel right now that here, here's the trend is Google forced everybody last year to move to Google Analytics 4. The solution itself was never fully developed. Like, And what I keep finding is they will add new functions to the solution literally every two to three weeks. But it's like simple things, which is great. But the biggest trend in what I do right now is data has gotten bigger. And in between clients is I'm learning Google BigQuery. I've taken a couple of courses. Uh, I was fortunate enough with one client, like, hey, can I just hook it in there? And just like, yeah, I said, um, that that is the big push with what Google, what Google decided to do. And my my biggest challenge right now with it is finding the time to build out this next piece of the business. And, but in terms of the industry, it, it's in a constant state of disruption. Uh, even with the end of cookies coming, which seems to be a moving calendar, um, you know, like how do we measure? Oh, here was one I was a conversation is these known as CDPs, customer data platforms. Uh, I was at an event a couple of months ago and was funny in a way. And the presenter was talking about using AI and customer data platforms to create this whole experience. And it didn't ring in my mind until the conversation I had the other day. Um, this one CDP, I believe, has a life of its own. Uh, I'm talking to a colleague and I'm like, yeah, um, I know I didn't sign up for this email and now I'm getting it. And I said, you're telling me it has the CDP on it. I said, because some of these are like, I don't, I, they extract all your information. And I, I might, my feeling is that it's kind of like the wild, wild west of the internet back 20 years ago. And you have CDPs and you have all these data privacy issues that somewhere along the line, there, there's going to be something that's either going to shift it or there's going to be more opt ins for something like that. Like they have now with cookie banners and all that jazz that, pops up now. So GDPs, I, I, I know is like the next big thing, but I have not been able to delve into it either. Yeah. It's, it's always ongoing. It sounds like. And, um, so how do you, um, stay ahead of these, uh, like what, what's your way that you stay kind of ahead of these trends? Because it sounds like it's changing like every couple of weeks, like you said. Well, right. <laughs> You have to listen. I always use, I use the term, you listen to the market chatter. Uh, I kind of use Upwork one to find clients, but it's also a great listening tool to what people are looking to kind of close gaps on. Uh, and what I noticed over, and this is going back since last year, is Google BigQuery and being able to pull your Google Analytics for and through Google BigQuery, attach it to the visualization tool, and some cases, for transparency, chat GPT with a plugin will write those queries very efficiently. Like you really, I like to have the coding skills just because sometimes, yeah, write this query for me and it doesn't work. I can edit and fix it myself. So big query, big data it is really on my radar more and more as I could see what people are looking to do as their organizations grow and scale, uh, you know, you're, you're pushing things beyond its limits and you have to find those solutions to get you out of avoiding having reporting and analysis problems down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that sounds like it would be a headache. So that's good. Yeah. It's good. To, um, and I know, um, AI, I'm sure, has has made things. It sounds like made some things easier, but then that's a whole beast 
and of itself for sure. Yeah, that's, that's, I can say this. Um, I, I belong to a, uh, a digital marketing AI meetup here. Uh, the woman who, who facilitates it is phenomenal, but this is, this is the wild, wild west. It really, it, it's, it makes my life a little bit easier, but also you start thinking 10 steps ahead and you're going, this might not be a good thing either. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. That's how I kind of feel like it too, you know, uh, from the video space is it, it like makes a lot of things easier, but then it also, uh, could be bad <laughs> later on, especially with Sora coming out, um, that could, uh, definitely make things a little bit more difficult. Uh, uh, but yeah, we have two final questions I want to ask you. The first one is what advice do you have to fellow entrepreneurs in your industry if they're starting out? One, be a practitioner of your craft. That, that is the most important thing. Two is have a lot of patience. And three is build out that network starting out because you just don't know when you're going to need someone that you can bounce an idea off of. Oh, hey, I I'm stuck. Can you, you know, somebody with the same level of skills, like, I don't know why I'm stuck. Do you have five minutes? Th those to me are, are two important things is being a practitioner and, and, and building out your network. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's a very, very um, much the same advice uh, I would give uh, anyone starting out in my industry as well. Cause uh, you know, if you're not, um, making videos and you're trying to, you know, produce videos for businesses. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, you need to be putting out video too. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it really does help to have that network of, of people who also are doing the same thing that you're doing and you can, um, uh, you know, cause there's always, uh, you know, same with my industry, uh, things are always changing. So it's, it's good to have someone to, to ask, you know, like, Hey, what's this? You know, <laughs> how did you do that thing? Yeah. So that, so that's always helpful. And then, um, my last question I wanted to ask you is, um, so what is ne next on the horizon for your, um, uh, long-term goals with your business? What do you say? Wow. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, the plan for this year was to Keep on my path um, through the power of networking. I was introduced to somebody who was a business partner, and there were two projects that we were going to execute on. One was, and I've kind of put my stake in the ground because I had a pivot, was digital talent hub Vegas, which is going to be something different than I envisioned for right now. And then the other one was being involved in networking so much. And, and again, you go out and you get ideas and, and I'm an active member in one association it was to build out our own chapters website, um, do some, you know, experimenting on advertising because at the end it's like, we want to grow members and it's just another channel to do it. Um, using, you know, meet up and, you know, to get, to get attention is good to one point, but I felt like, that would have been something we could have even brought to market as like a, a, a boilerplate for another association to say, hey, we know this this style, this site works. Um, it's optimized, it gets eyes on it. We've been able to grow membership, but that, I own the domain, but it's just been shelved right now. So Digital Talent Hub is gonna become something slightly different. Um, again, depending on how much other work I have, I'll build that out on my own and, um, Again, I, I've got some big engagements coming up, so it's it's like, where, where do I find that balance? Do I want to spend my weekends here here in the office working on digital talent, or do I want to just take a break and get out? Yeah, always always a, a balance. That's for sure. Being an entrepreneur, you gotta find a way to balance it out, and then that, that would be really cool. That's a, a really good concept for a website. Yeah, it, yeah, the, for for. I'll put it this way. I had gone to another event from a different association. And what's interesting is if any, in real simple terms, when, you know, when you belong to a networking association, everybody, you know, everybody's bringing their own company in. 
So everybody's kind of sponsoring the event. So it's like its own marketing tool either way to have the site, like a site where, you know, you've got everybody's company logo, you know, email address and URL on there to say, you know, just another way. It's just another, you know, uh, channel, one for the chapter, but for everybody else to be able to advertise basically almost at no cost. So Mm -hmm. it, my, my other intention really is if I, I, I'm, been having conversations with people trying to find the right business partner to go execute on that. So again, it's not a priority right now, but it's just that, that whole thing. And I know instinctively, if I could bring that to market, um, it would be, it it would do well. Yeah, it definitely would. That's a good um, concept on it too, because that makes a lot of sense to have something like that. For networking groups. Do you have anything you want to close out with before we wrap out of here? So if anybody's looking, my, my shameless plug for me is you can find me at zendigitalanalytics.com. I, I will talk to anybody who has a website. I don't, there's no obligation to it. If you're stuck, if you have a question, I, I'm totally open to having conversations. I I, I, I can talk to anybody. <laughs> I had a conversation with somebody who's like, so multi-million dollar clients don't intimidate you? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's data. <laughs> what else? It's data. It doesn't scare me. So if, you know, yeah, I'm here locally up in North Las Vegas, but I am always open to having a conversation with somebody who like, even if, even if it's somebody doing what I do and you get stuck, hit me up. If not, I might know somebody within my network that can help you out. Beautiful, Neil. Well, thank you so much again for being on the podcast. I I really appreciate it. It's great having you on. Good seeing you, Drew. I appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. And thank you for everybody who tuning in, watching this episode. Uh, More to come. And as always, stay classy.